What's up my friend, welcome back to another video. And today I just wanted to do a quick comparison between three different solo string libraries. And these are my preferred favorites for uh, solo violin, solo viola, and solo cello. So you can probably already tell the violin and cello and you could probably guess my viola uh, of choice if you are a follower of this channel for any length of time. But without any further ado, let me just get into it and show you what these three libraries are. Now, just a little disclaimer before I actually demonstrate the patches. I want to first tell you that I'm, uh, in terms of criteria, what I was looking for is great legato, smooth vibrato, and just a very passionate and emotive performance overall. So this typically comes in the form of uh, maybe samples being recorded in a musical context. Maybe they're playing a piece of music and those samples are typically extracted from those performances. But even if not, you know, you can typically get some pretty good expression from, uh, from samples, but it just makes it a little bit more difficult because the, the musician maybe not necessarily be in that musical frame of mind, you know, or in a, in a performance state of mind, I should say. But these libraries in particular, they're all quite different, um, but they all have their very own unique sound and the instrument itself is gorgeous. So I wanna share those with you today and kind of demonstrate the sound a little bit for you as well. In case you're curious about my general recommendations for sample libraries though, I do wanna give you my sample library buyer's guide in case you don't have it yet. It's a completely free guide that goes over all my favorites, including you know strings, winds, brass, and percussion. I've also included some other categories like for piano libraries, harp libraries, jazz libraries, ethnic libraries, and so on and so forth. It's super comprehensive. And in case you're interested in my thoughts on a particular library, or maybe you're just unsure of whether my uh, choice is in there, then it's a completely free guide I want to give you. And you can check it out by clicking the first link in the description box below. So you can download that as my gift to you. And uh, it's my thank you to you for checking out this video today. All right, so without further ado, the first library I want to share is the Expressive Violin by Kernst Audio. Uh, this is a relatively new library, definitely the newest one of the three. And it actually came at a perfect time because in my personal collection, I really don't have a solo violin meant for you know solo purposes that sounds good, uh, really good in a more melodic legato context. There are certainly some, but you know those are more meant for ensemble context or maybe even just first chair context. And they don't really have that exposed detailed sound that I'm really looking for um, until this library came out. So big props to Kernst Audio. But yeah, let me, let me share it with you first. Um, and yeah, this is what it kind of sounds like. So this library has a really sweet, really gorgeous sound that I just, I fall in love with every time. And this is one library that I can actually close my eyes, play, and just really imagine a real player uh, performing, you know? So, so this is definitely the upside of this library is, is really just is one patch. And here, let me quickly show you. This is the contact. It's made for contact player as well. So you can see, uh, but yeah, just one patch and it's quite lightweight, 318 megabytes. So you know, it really just serves that one purpose. Just legato, there's no other articulation, so it really just specializes in this one area. Um, so of course there's pros and cons to both of that, but there you go. That's the violin uh, library of my choice for solo legato. Then when it comes to uh, viola, 
my choice is the Tableau Solo Strings by Orchestral Tools or uh, Creative, uh, sorry, Organic Samples and Distributed through Orchestral Tools. And basically, they have these three instruments, violin, viola, and cello. I personally think the viola is the best one out of the bunch, and they do have different articulations, but really, I only use it for the legato anyway. So let me show you what that sounds like. It's hosted in the sign player, which is free from orchestral tools, so have a quick listen. So yeah, in my collection at least, there really is no other library that sings quite like this one and feels just that buttery smooth, you know? So, so nice. Um, yeah, so the, the main upsides to this library are definitely the legato, very smooth performances overall. The transitions are evident, but they're not overly strong. Uh, one of the downsides is that there is automatic rebowing, so there's no infinite bow, which I would really, really love. And there are no slurred changes as far as I'm aware. I believe it's only bowed changes as well. But overall, it's kind of worth it for me because this library and the expressive violin that we've gone through so far and the cello that we'll take a look at, they all stand out very well in their own right. In terms of like at the front of a mix, if there's a denser arrangement in the background, these libraries serve that purpose really well of just standing out in the front and being the soloist. So it's really, really cool. Okay, third and finally, let's take a look at the cello. This is the Tina Guo Cello Legato. I've had this library for ages now. Um, but it, yeah, it's also made for the contact player and they have the classic version and they have the updated modern version. So it's cool because you can tw uh, trigger the legato speed, the legato intensity, but let's just see, maybe we'll push it up a bit and then we'll turn the intensity down just a bit here. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's the Tina Guo Cello Legato. So all three libraries sound beautiful in their own right. Again, I just wanted to share with you my favorite, basically legato uh, solo string library for each different section. And I truly believe that these ones are classics, or if they aren't yet, they will be in the near future. Um, again, you know, your, your opinions may differ, of course. And I, I, like all in all, these are samples, so they're never going to sound quite as realistic as a real instrument. But with the technology advancing ever more, I just, 
it's so exciting to see what what kind of happens in sample land and the fact that developers are still continuing and trying to push the envelope further and further with sampled instruments especially more specialty libraries such as these it's just really amazing and um it's it's healthy competition you know i think competitors or developers they ought to push themselves forward and uh basically support one another instead of trying to like overstep on one another or you know trying to compete for the for all the customers Look, customers spend on multiple sources, right? So it's not like, oh, okay, I only buy orchestral tool stuff, you know, so I'll never touch any other developer. Like, unless you're a hardcore OT fan and you've never really used anything else, most likely, you know, we kind of branch out in different areas. So there's always something to be said for just trying to expand your product line and try to serve as many people as possible. But just know that there are always more options out there for you, no matter what from both the developer's perspective and the customer's perspective. So all in all, it's a really exciting time for sample libraries. And I hope you enjoyed this quick little video today to demonstrate some of my favorite solo legato libraries, string libraries. Uh, let me know yours as well in the comments below. I'd love to hear what kind of solo libraries you prefer, prefer to use. Uh, maybe they're easier to use for you, or maybe you just really like the sound of a particular library. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And again, if you don't have my sample library buyer's guide, I want to give it to you as a gift. And uh, just for checking out this video, you know, there, it's a comprehensive look into all my favorite sample libraries. I've also included the prices there as well. So you know how much you would be investing in a certain library. And I've also shared like my personal uses for the library, what what you would use it for, what, did it, what it's intended for. And so it's all listed in the guide. It's super comprehensive. And I want to give it to you as a gift for checking out this video today so you can click the first link in the box below to grab it um it's uh, just keep keep it by your side whenever you're maybe on the market for a new library and i hope it's valuable to you so thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it and i'll catch you in the next video take care bye bye